the spot to get you hot, motivated, educated, money generated, the brain box, place to take you higher, get you inspired, keep you lifted, show you gifted, the brain box, place to take you higher, get you inspired, keep you lifted, show you gifted, the brain box. Entertainment here with another episode of the Brain Box. As always, thank you to all the supporters of the Brain Box and Get Lifted Entertainment. I appreciate the new subscribers, feedback, inspiration, and motivation to keep the channel going. Thank you all very, very much. If you haven't done so already, please follow on socials at the Brain Box, the Brain B O X X on Instagram, and check out Get Lifted Entertainment on Instagram as well. And if you haven't done so already, visit that website, getliftedentertainment.com. So today I'm going to talk about word of mouth marketing. Word of mouth marketing. No, but word of mouth marketing is a tactic and strategy that I feel it never gets old. Uh, word of mouth is one of the most successful strategies and tactics when it comes to marketing and branding yourself. So I do want to bring this back to the forefront just to give people a refresher on why word of mouth marketing is so important and some of the tips and tactics that you can use to try to inc incorporate this in your strategies. So obviously you have your traditional word of mouth marketing. It was pretty much spread from one person to another based on a recommendation. Um, how many of you have actually been like, you know, go visit such and such website. They're a good barber or landscaping company, merchandise, makeup artist, author, musician, uh, web designer, graphic designer, you know, all of those individuals are inside of that circle. Anybody who's an entrepreneur has a business, any corporation that has a business, Nike, I mean, if you talk about Jordan, that's word of mouth marketing for Nike, you know what I mean? So that's pretty much how it all works, word of mouth marketing. Um, you have your modern day word of mouth marketing which is described both targeted efforts and naturally occurring instances where users share the satisfaction of a brand. So for instance, if you order a piece of merchandise or um, you listen to someone's album, you know, you were pretty much satisfied by that merchandise, that album, that brand, the makeup artist, uh, videographer, graphic designer, and that's pretty much, because of that satisfaction, you went ahead and you talked about them. You may have posted about them. Uh, you may have, you know, been like, you know, check out such and such. They did this great artwork for me. They designed this website for me. They designed this flyer for me. Look at my makeup look. It was done by Makeup Mother. Check out her website, MakeupMother.com. You know, those are your modern day word of mouth marketing where, like I said, it's naturally occurring from an instance of satisfaction. So in today's world, especially with social media, a single recommendation can have a far greater impact leading of, you know, leading to some sort of clientele or capitalization and opportunity for an individual. So don't be afraid to talk about people's business. Don't be afraid to talk about other people's success. Don't be afraid to give that recommendation. I honestly feel like when you recommend another company, another artist, another producer, another graphic designer, videographer, what have you, it makes you look good. It, it doesn't hurt to mention anyone else because now you've built a sense of trust, especially if that individual falls through and delivers great work. You've now built a sense of trust amongst individuals and say, hey, you know what? I can trust this individual. Give me a great recommendation. You got something going on. Now they're more keen to uh, be involved and interact or purchase uh, or talk about what you have going on as well. Spread the word for you. So 
I was doing some research and I came across an article where it said, Nielsen, 92% of people trust recommendations from family and friends over any type of other advertisement out there. So just keep that in mind. 92%, that's a, that's a high percentage of people that trust recommendations of friends and family uh, in regards to another brand. So again, don't be afraid to talk about people's brand successes and your experience that you've had with a company brand or artist, producer, graphic designer, videographer, what have you. Um, trust is really very significant and it has a huge effect on one's intention to buy. So you wanna make sure that you spread the word. You know, if something great happened, talk about it. We have a thing about wanting to talk about instances that weren't so great experiences that weren't so great and i feel like the world would, would be a much happier place if we discussed a lot more positive than we did talk about the negative things or experiences that we've had so when it comes to word of mouth marketing it happens in two ways it happens organically and then it happens with the use of marketing and advertisement campaigns so when I say organic word of mouth marketing, um, organic word of mouth marketing, it comes naturally when people, they become advocates because they are happy with a product and they have this natural desire to share their support and enthusiasm for what you have going on. So again, building that great experience, giving somebody something that they can remember is always going to translate into that organic word of mouth marketing. Uh, and then you have what's considered like your amplified word of mouth marketing. And that occurs when a marketer or your team, they launch a campaign designed to encourage or accelerate the uh, existing product that you have, music that you have within an existing community or to try to touch with within other communities that you haven't quite reached yet, but you want to pull them in. So just keep that in mind that or that organic and amplified, they are two separate things and they work in different ways. And so you do have to put in that work to try to capitalize off of both of them. Like, of course, we want people to just go out there and talk about what it is that we have going on or what we're selling um, or what we got coming up, but that's not gonna always happen. So you and your team really have to put together uh, and launch a campaign that's designed to encourage and accelerate the purpose of your brand, product, music, and whatever else you may have going on. So I just wanna talk about some stats that I've come across in regards to word of mouth marketing. Like I was saying before, Nielsen reports that 92% of consumers believe the suggestions from friends and family that talk about and advertise for another company brand um, product. And so just the fact that 92%, that means you need to have some sort of pitch to describe um, who you are, what you got going on, why you have it going on and deliver that sense of purpose and excitement so that people can, your family and friends can go on to talk about it and encourage other people and spread that uh, knowledge in regards to who you are via word of mouth, right? So beyond that, beyond family and friends, you have 88% of people that trust online reviews. I know me personally, when it comes to dealing with bigger corporations, um, looking for apartments, um, dealing with delivery services and things of that nature. I like to go on Yelp for restaurants. I like to go on Google reviews and check out what other people have said. And I narrow it down from there. You know, if there are way more positives than there are negatives, then I go with that. If there are more negatives than there are positives, scratching that off, out the door, not even going to try it. Your food may look great on pictures, but these reviews here say otherwise. So 
keep that in mind that 88% of people go online, look for reviews. So this could be in regards to how you post on Instagram, the comments that are in your Instagram posts, the comments that are on your Facebook posts, the comments that may be left on your videos on YouTube. Um, and that's why I tell people to be very careful with the content that you post. Uh, because even though you may not mean it to come off in a negative light, everyone has their own uh, perception and their own opinion. And when it comes to building a brand and marketing yourself, you, you, you have to be subjective to certain things and other people's opinions is one. So I'm not saying don't be yourself, but be careful being yourself. Um, so then you have 74% of consumers identify word of mouth as a key influencer in their purchasing decisions. And so again, that goes back to what I was just saying for me, I go on Yelp, I go on Google review, I check out reviews for restaurants when I'm having a hunt for an apartment, you know, that may be something that I incorporate, like what are the reviews on these particular sites? And it helps me make my decision It influences me. So, um, even though everyone does not seek out reviews and things of that nature, there is a large percentage that does. So again, be careful what you're posting on your social medias, on your YouTube um, channel as well. Uh, the comments are going to be there and people are going to look at those comments and make their decision on whether or not they want to support you. If you're selling a merchandise, a piece of merchandise or merchandise, a product, and you have reviews in regards to your services that aren't so great, I would take that as something where you might need to step back and reevaluate and, and figure out, you know, how can I correct these negative remarks or these not so great comments in regards to what I have going on. So it's not always be offended, get mad and retaliate with being argumentative and things like that. Sometimes you just have to let people say what they're going to say and take it and reevaluate yourself and make it better. Um, so keep in mind that when, when you, when you're doing word of mouth marketing and advertisement, it's more than do a good job and hope that you get a referral. You really have to put in that work and you have to pay attention to the things that you put out there as well in order for it to be, um, proactive for you. So now I want to talk about some of the ways that a strong word of mouth strategy can really help build, if you will, the heart of your business and lay a really great foundation on which to build everything else from. And so word of mouth marketing, what it does is it builds that brand loyalty, right? And who doesn't want brand loyalty? I know I want brand loyalty. Um, it's one of the reasons why I just don't practice certain behaviors when it comes to building Get Lifted Entertainment, um, now the brain box, you know, I don't purchase followers. I don't purchase likes, you know, even though it, it may seem like it takes longer to get there, I'd rather take the long way than, and build that brand loyalty versus <laughs> purchasing a bunch of fake individual robots or what have you and making it look like I have something going on and, and I have no type of backing to really show if I were to do a conference, will I have people sign up? No, because yeah, you know, or a seminar, why would anybody sign up? I, I purchased a whole bunch of robots, <laughs> you know, for, for followers and likes. So brand loyalty goes a long way and it, and it incorporates um, a lot of factors. And so it really, when you're coming, when it comes to building that brand loyalty, it costs five times more to acquire a new fan or a new customer than it is to keep the current ones that you have. And that's a lot. Like if you can retain the individuals that currently support you by building up that brand loyalty and respect for yourself and what you have going on, um, it can boost the company's probability in regards to converting a sale 
and things of that nature by 75%. And so another factor in regards to leaving a positive word of mouth advertisement, it keeps the customers coming back when they see other people uh, leaving great remarks about you, leaving great remarks about your product, your services. And it, it then turns into referring other customers who also keep coming back and referring more customers. And all of a sudden you got a machine that's pumping out new customers who are not only loyal to you, but loyal to your brand. So that's one of the benefits of word of mouth marketing. That's great. It builds brand loyalty. So then you have brand trust and that goes back to that percentage where, you know, 92% of people trust suggestions from uh, family and friends and 70% trust consumer reviews. So in other words, people trust friends and even strangers more than they will do ads. So you could put all the ads out there you want about what you have going on, flyers and um, whatever other marketing materials that you use, but that trust comes in from the suggestions of family, friends, and consumer reviews. So it's up to you to build up the trustwork, uh, that trustworthy factor in regards to your content, your brand, your product, your services, so that it can lead to that machine that's pumping out new customers who continue to come back or who continue to refer and they continue to come back. And so brand trust is another benefit of a great word of mouth um, strategy, a great word of mouth foundation, for you and your brand. So again, word of mouth, word of mouth, talk about it, spread it. Don't be afraid to talk about other people's successes. Um, another benefit of word of mouth marketing is it does, it creates a buzz. Um, it creates a sales funnel for you. Um, it creates a, not only just a buzz, but a genuine buzz. You know, I just talked about buying the fake followers and the fake likes and things of that nature, but here it is like, you got real people talking about what you have going on and eventually that creates a buzz for your brand and you know, you'll have people shouting you out, you'll have people wanting to take pictures, purchase your stuff, listen to your music just because there's a buzz and they want to be a part of it. So a good word of mouth strategy, it severely increases the likelihood of this happening. And so if you impress the right person, you never know where it's going to take you. And you always want to make sure that you create an epic first experience, right? I know for me, first impressions are very lasting. Um, I personally, I'm not going to lie. Sometimes I get turned off. Someone may be a great artist and then I go on their Instagram. Only thing I do is see them pouring lean in the bottle. I mean, I know that might be judgmental because everybody's got their own habits or whatever the case may be, but yeah, that's a whole nother topic. <laughs> I'm not going to go there right now, but I'm just saying create an epic first experience, first impression, and that can take you a longer way than the opposite. And so now I want to talk about just a few tips before I let you guys go. Um, some of the tips that I found that are helpful when it comes to word of mouth marketing is certain trigger words. If you come up with certain trigger words, that's kind of like the X factor for your brand. What this does is it makes your business stand out. It makes it stand out from your industry and puts you into a different space. You want that to be something that's memorable. It could be, you know, a slogan, it could be your motto, but you definitely want to set up words that are like the X factor for you. Um, another great tip, is visual triggers. Again, creating stunning visuals um, for an, a great experience for people to want to come and watch and look at and share. Uh, photos, videos, obviously with social media, those are a huge factor in your content and media presence to be able to accelerate the growth of who you are as a person product, brand, service. So you want to be creating something that's totally different and out the box. 
um, and another way to trigger people into spreading the word about your business. Um, it doesn't mean that you have to redefine your business, but it could be that your market is so saturated with some of the same things. Why not step outside of the box and put yourself in another space? Um, emotional provocation, right? Emotional, when you provoke emotions, especially happy emotions, um, that tends to be very powerful for generating and sharing and getting people to talk about what it is that you have going on. So this can be done in regards to social media. It can be done through a website. It can be done through, you know, a live video, but provoking those emotions, especially happy emotions or where people can relate to you is a significant factor in generating word of mouth marketing for you. Um, you can also encourage user generated content. And when I say user generated content, that's say you got a piece of merchandise, you're selling merchandise and for every customer that purchases merchandise from you, you ask them, you know, take a picture in there and tag me in it. Those are powerful statements. When people see that you have purchased something from an independent entrepreneur, it's not like Versace, Gucci, and you know, all these other high end brands that half of us can't even afford, <laughs> but somehow we get out there and we find our way to buy this just so we could take a picture and say, Hey, I'm in a Versace, I'm in a, a Gucci shirt, or I got a Gucci purse, or uh, whatever, Michael Core purse, whatever the case may be. It's, it's a powerful statement for those brands, but hey, they already got money, so um. When I was doing my research, I saw that 85% of users find user-generated content more influential than photos and videos. So again, generate that user-generated content. Um, last but not least, push ratings, push reviews, push people to leave comments on you know, your uh, YouTube leave a comment, drop a comment in, in your Instagram post, you know, create posts on Facebook where people um, are going to interact and be responsive. That too is a huge factor in creating um, some engagement. It creates a buzz. It gets people more engaged and like, hey, this is a person that's personable. I like what they have going on. I'm going to tell somebody else to, hey, hop on their website. You see that question that they asked? Hey, you see that video that they posted? Check it out. That creates that word of mouth foundation that you need to create that genuine buzz. And lastly, offer some sort of referral program. A referral program isn't going to um, outweigh bad experiences that customers have. But if a customer has a great experience with you or a fan has a great experience with you and you have a referral program, they're going to be more keen to talking about what you have going on because not only do they enjoy and were they satisfied, but now they get a reward. Who doesn't want a reward? Hey, talk about it. Give a reward. They're going to talk about it even more. So don't forget to offer some sort of referral program. Um, and you be creative with that referral program. It doesn't always have to be cash. It could be something like for every three people that you talk, tell me that um, they came to you to download my music, you know, the next time I have a show, you got free tickets or, you know, give out a gift card to go check out the movies, you know, something, just be creative when you're coming up with a referral program. So, that's pretty much all I have when it comes to the word of mouth marketing. There's so much out there, but I just wanted to touch on what I felt like were the most important pointers um, and, and just kind of, you know, let people know that word of mouth marketing is still very much effective. And don't leave that out when it comes to putting together that marketing strategy and plan that you and your team are coming up with because it does work. And like I said, it works more so sometimes in photos and videos. So I appreciate you for tuning into the Brain Box again with me here this week. 
Um, if you haven't done so already, as I was saying at the beginning, follow the Brain Box on Instagram. Check out the website, getliftedentertainment.com. And until next time, I am out. The Brain Box.